I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission. Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Forsell. Ready? Pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Ms. McGill. Chair Connor. Present. Longstreet. Here. Forsell. Here. Gonzalez. Here. Lara Mahal is not present, and intern Gonzalez is not present. Thank you. Ms. Rapp, any changes to the agenda? No, ma'am. Thank you. Written communication, which we have in front of us for our tree item. Okay, just to bring to your attention. Uh, public comment. Any member of the public may address the commission for up to one minute on any subject within the jurisdiction of the commission that is not scheduled for a public discussion before the commission. And seeing many slips, um, Commissioner okay. Longstreet. We'll start with Ken Locke, and he'll be followed by Robert Grijalva. Okay, Mr. Locke. My name is Ken Locke. I, I spoke before the school board, did a public comment back some time ago. I challenged, uh, I've actually protested their form of education, and I'm going to be raising a contest with the teachers in the fall. It's going to be based on an essay question. It'll be in relation to them explaining the relationship between two or more disciplines and how they are interrelated. What I'm going to try to uh, get this community to come aboard on is the whole basis of an interdisciplinary intelligence. I have a an intelligence or uh, in relation to painting and in tennis. And right now this community is in relation to interdisciplinary, it's substandard. It's off, it's off the charts kind of thing. It's using false concepts such as competition. The children again are receiving a substandard education. I'm here to uh, change that. Uh, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, I have a video I did today, actually, uh, on, put it up on YouTube. It's called Competition. Uh, uh, it's, it's called Money and Competition are False Concepts. And if you put that probably in there, you'll, you'll find it through the search engine. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Um, Mr. Grijalva will be followed by Kevin Kemper. Uh, it's actually Grijalva. But, you know. Sorry about that. I'll try to be brief. I know it's one minute. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Robert Grijalva, and I'm a fourth-generation Santa Barbara resident and owner of a very popular uh, fitness program here in Santa Barbara called Body Boot Camp of Santa Barbara. We've been in business for over four years, and we have won Best of Santa Barbara in the Independent Readers Poll uh, twice. And I'm here today because I honestly feel that my business and me are being unfairly targeted by the Office of Parks and Recreation Department in relation to the application for a use permit. The last request was denied and was given reasons that are ever-changing, <laughs> apparently. The most recent reason given by Susan at that office was that there's been an explosion of requests for applications such as ours, and they're only going to give two permits for Shoreline Park, which is where we've been requesting. I think that both statements are untrue, but I can only address the one about the number of permits. Uh, there's another group that's using the park for similar kind of work at activity and has been given, I think Sue told me this morning, uh, five or more permits for classes at various times in the park. Um, and then there's another gentleman who's doing one hour on Mondays. So that to me is six, not two. Um, but I've always been kind of bad with math. Um, and the majority of them are going to just one group, um, which to me is a little discriminatory. And that group is only for women. Our group is for men and women. And so the men in our group have no place to go if we have no place to hold our class. Um, we're certainly happy to get a permit and pay the fee and follow all the regulations. But right now, we understand the regulations are not clear. So it's my understanding that since there's been, since I started the very first boot camp four years ago, that there's been a growth in these kinds of activities. And now the Parks Department wants to come up with some regulations around it. Certainly totally understandable. Um, we just feel that if you're going to create the regulations, they need to be fair for, and equitable for everybody. So I'm asking today not to be, have a discussion about this necessarily, but ask for a time where we can fully talk about this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Kemper will be followed by Cheryl Geifer. Geifer. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Commissioners. Um, Rob actually kind of covered everything I was going to say. 
he stole all my topics. Um, but I am a member of Body Boot Camp, and I've been a member for a while. And I was actually very upset and kind of demoralized in the fact that the city just all of a sudden decided, oh, we're not going to give you a permit anymore, and we're going to come up with some new regulations. And I think that the city or the Parks Department really should look and decide, you know, how they're going to regulate, you know, who's going to be in the park and how that's going to work because, um, you know, like Rob alluded to the fact that the camp that there's the, the boot camp that's there now um, is only for women. So I wouldn't be able to participate in the park, in, you know, in the boot camp, which obviously is a discrimination. And, uh, you know, before when there was no, you know, permit issue, I didn't really care if it was just a women's camp. I mean, obviously, that, I think that's great. But when you're going to limit it to only a certain number of, you know, people using the park at a certain time, that makes it a little more difficult. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Next. Cheryl. Good afternoon. My name is Cheryl Giefer. I'm a resident of Santa Barbara for 11 years and a newer member of Body Boot Camp. And, and I have to tell you, when I joined this camp recently, this uh, exercise regime, I thought I'd die and went to heaven. I mean, it's just, I've been to gyms and I've had trainers, but this is um, very affordable and they're, they've actually given me many generous um, free sessions in which to get to know them. Um, I feel very attached to that camp. I like the fact that it's, it's a co-ed camp. And, um, you know, to be able to, you know, I have a, a, a morning ritual now, and all of it revolves around getting healthy and, and feeling better. And to be out there at Shoreline Park working on, on that has just been like an unbelievable enlightenment for me. And it would be a real loss in, in my life to not be able to participate. I know, like Kevin said, I could probably join the women's group, but I really feel an affinity towards them. We have a wonderful teacher who uh, is newly pregnant. She's afraid for her job if she doesn't get to work there. You know, she's a young woman with a new family, and she's um, only just, um, you know, making men's eat making ends meet, which is difficult in this town, so please, this is a time. Okay. Uh, don't give up our permit. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? Okay. Commissioner reports? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <clears throat> I attended the Golf Course Advisory Committee meeting this month, and there's good news and bad news. The good news is um, everything is in full swing for the 50th anniversary celebration of Municipal Golf Course, and there are going to be some exciting events in the first part of September. And um, if you want more information about um, playing golf or going to some of the other events, get in touch with either the golf course or the Park and Recreation Department, and they will um, enlighten you as to just what is available in that first part of September. I think it's going to be the second week of September. Um, the bad news is a lot of very prominent and uh, important people that have been with the golf course for a long time are choosing to retire as um, they have reached that certain age where um, uh, <clears throat> they deserve some time off. Richard Chavez, the director of golf, I think has been there 28 years. And he is uh, retiring. I can't remember going to the golf course when he wasn't there. Um, Nancy Woods, our business manager who handles things at the golf course as well, is uh, retiring, I believe, August 1st. And Scott Jorgensen, who is the golf course superintendent, retired last week. Um, I understand that there, is, uh, there are processes in, uh, in motion to find replacements for all these people, but I do have to say that, you know, when this team has been together for this long, um, it's going to be very difficult to get all the pieces of the puzzle to uh, mesh again uh, at the golf course. So we'll miss all of those people, and they've all done a great job in time that I've been um, the liaison to the golf course advisory committee. I've always been very impressed with um, the work of all three of them. So hopefully a new team can be constructed. Um, I also attended the Park Foundation meeting on July 16th, and there were a number of small requests that were approved, and there was some discussion about a board retreat, uh, which is going to be planned for the not-too-distant future, I think, in October, and other um, kind of typical uh, 
monthly event or uh, items on the agenda. And those are the two that I have to report on, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Forsell. Any other reports at this time? Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, Commissioner I, Longstreet. Um, I attended, although I'm not the liaison, but I did attend the Lower West Side meeting this last month, and they um, had a very active meeting. Our newest staff member there did a good job um, representing the, sta the city. Uh, the after-school program looks to be in good shape, or it's all-day program now. Uh, an interesting young woman running it who has some, is bringing some new ideas to the table. Um, there was a good showing of the community at the meeting, and of course everyone was interested in the youth violence issues, and they are attempting to mobilize themselves in the neighborhood around that. So um, it was a good meeting. Uh, I've also attended Creeks. Creeks received the public opinion poll uh, on how they're doing with the outreach, and it was very interesting, and I'd hope at some point we would get a, a presentation here about the changes over the years. It was, um, it was just fascinating stuff. Um, and then last night I went to the Douglas Family Preserve Technical Advisory Committee meeting out at the site. And I would encourage um, commissioners to go out there and look at the restoration sites. They're coming along well. Um, the committee is actively planning into 2009. And uh, they have a lot of good ideas. And Kathy Fry is moving forward on the management plan and combining all the elements to really make that um, a useful document now. It's been a long time in the works, but it's coming together. So thank you. Any staff communications, Ms. Rapp? No, Chair Connor. Thank you. Item number one, summary of council actions. Any highlights on council actions, Ms. Rapp? No, I believe that the commission is familiar with everything or, those, or it's self-explanatory. And, and actually, I would just ask under um, uh, commission and staff comments whether the commission was interested in having me talk to the item that was brought by the public opinion. I'd be happy yes, to do that. Yes, and who we could refer that to or um, what we need to do. At this point, the background is that uh, for the last several months, staff have been receiving numerous complaints from Shoreline Park users. Uh, feeling that there was um, just a tremendous number of unpermitted commercial activities taking place in Shoreline Park. Largely, uh, these types of um, exercise programs, outdoor exercise programs. So with that, we had a couple of follow-up actions. One, we started monitoring the groups uh, and approaching them and letting them know that they needed to have a park permit. Um, as you can hear, some of them have permits, some of them are just now hearing about this and they need to have a permit. So the permit issue is one thing. The second thing is this is um, really an explosion of this type of activity. This is not a gradual increase. This is like we're continually hearing about more and more programs. and I think it's a great thing. The Parks and Recreation Department supports, you know, these types of activities which are outdoors. They take physical activity programs out of the gym, and these programs are very successful and, and have a great benefit to um, the community. The park is a public park, but in order to have a commercial activity, you do have to have a city business license and you do have to have a park permit because you cannot use public property for private gain without a permit um, authorizing that use. So uh, the other factor is everybody wants to be at Shoreline Park and thus that's why we've been getting numerous complaints from Shoreline Park neighbors and park users. So what we have done, because we're realizing that we need to make some, revisit this discussion of, okay, this is obviously a new kind of category of permitting that we haven't had with any kind of frequency like this in the past. 
So, in fact, we've, we're using a category that we, uh, for fee payment, that we set years ago because it was only the occasional request, and we're looking at it and asking ourselves, <coughs> is this the right kind of fee structure for a commercial activity in a park? So that's one thing. The second thing is, just as we do with our special events, we monitor the impact to any one park. And it's very clear that Shoreline Park, because it is the preferred location for all the reasons that everybody loves Shoreline Park, is being over-programmed with those kinds of activities. Park users have told us that they feel like their park has been turned into an outdoor gym. So we, we put a um, moratorium on any further permitting of those types of activities in Shoreline Park. We've done the same for La Mesa Park because there is already a group doing the same thing there. Um, so we are in the process of, um, I have my staff doing some research and analysis on where we go from here. Um, I, I hear the, and all of the people that came to speak today emailed me and we've had an email conversation, so this is not the first time they're bringing their concerns to the department. Um, clearly our intent is not to interrupt anyone's fitness regime, um, so perhaps it's, it's offering them in, within a window of time the opportunity, but in a different park <coughs> location. So staff is looking at that. Uh, but those are the issues. Um, I don't know what the outcome is yet because staff is just really starting to um, to talk about this, look into it further. Um, it's just a tremendous increase in the number of requests for these types of activities. It's a good thing because we love having people be active in our parks. It's just we don't put all of our special events in the same park that everybody wants to go to because they want to be at that park. We just don't do it. It's not the right thing for the park and for the other park users. So that's really the issue. Have you expressed those, um, those, um, that information to the people that just spoke? Yes, I have. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments? And so we'll look forward probably to seeing this on our agenda in the future. I, I would imagine that by September at your next meeting that we'll have a better handle on it. We may be coming to you with a proposed fee structure, and I don't know this yet if we'll propose something different than, than what is currently in place, but we're looking at that. And similar to how we restrict, um, you know, events, like in the waterfront area and our different parks, we may have some guidelines that we'll share with you as well for how we permit. Okay, yeah, because I, I, I too think we need to encourage as much physical activity as we can while, you know, I understand protecting the park users. And it is unfortunate if your neighborhood park is the beachfront because it's the jewel of our system, so you you know you've bought into the most public of public parks. Any other comments? Yeah, uh, just yes. a question. When these groups uh, don't exercise at the uh, shoreline, where do they go? Or well, the outdoor fitness activities like this are a recent thing. Um, they're very popular in all different communities, including ours. They have tended to be on the beaches because working out on sand is a good activity. They've tended to be in places like Shoreline Park with a broad expanse of flat turf. Um, and those are the kinds of activities. So right now, currently, we have groups permitted at Shoreline and at La Mesa. We've had people express interest in doing uh, like an outdoor Tai Chi class at Alameda Park. So we have, with all of these people, encourage them in two ways. One, you can get your park permit and have your activity that way. We've also encouraged them if they would like to do the program through our parks and recreation program as an independent contractor. Um, because that provides instructors, you know, if they're a business owner, it's a little different for them. They're set up thinking differently, but for some of these people, they're really just operating as independents, and so there's um, advantages to being associated with the city program in that way. 
Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I had a um, clarification. In the paper recently, there have been a lot of letters to the editor with regard to safety issues at Shoreline Park, and they tend to um, center around um, elderly, older people um, being in uh, fear of uh, skateboarders, others that are um, bicyclists and uh, on, the, on the sidewalks and things. I just want to make clear that this is something completely separate from that. This, the disputes, the um, uh, the people that are, have been um, complaining publicly in the newspaper about Shoreline Park being a problem area has nothing to do with this commercial thing. This is just a matter of um, cr uh, overcrowding and overuse. Not um, there's no issue with the groups that we're talking about and that we're here today about them being a safety hazard or anything. Uh, Chair Connor and Commissioner Forsell, let me broaden um, my answer a bit just to include you in um, some background. For the last several months and and uh, and you know and longer, we have had different Shoreline Park neighbors and park users come to us and talk about an increasing number of problems that they're experiencing in the park. Among those problems are bicyclists, skateboarders, and by bicyclists I do mean young children learning how to ride their bikes and also you know adult bike riders riding their bike with careless fashion through the bike through the park. Um, we've had complaints about increased uh, activity by homeless people in the park. We've had complaints about the commercial activities in the park. So we have been uh, conducting neighborhood meetings at the park. The park staff and the police department have held two or three public meetings at the park to hear park resident, park users and neighbors complaints and concerns and to respond to that. Um, and we have, you know, gotten emails from various Shoreline Park neighbors and park users about these same issues. So none of these are new, is new issues. With regard to your question of whether these commercial activities are part of the safety concerns that people have discussed, yes. And that was one of the issues that we have discussed with the issuing of the park permit, uh, we, had, we heard that, that some of these organized activities interfere with people walking in the park. They're doing their activity, they're concentrated on that, they're a group, and so occasionally there have been some interference with other park yeah. users. So all the more reason that when we issue a park permit, we talk about how they use the park with other park users. But the primary issues with safety are about bikes and skateboarders. Throw in those uh, troublesome squirrels and we've got a real cauldron here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Director. And I also remember that we had the um, plaques on the trees were a big item for a while. That's right. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Larimer like Hall. Cemetery. Um, I, I, I would suspect that the that there would be concern on the part of the participants in these programs about um, not n not having access to a park to do their business um, during the summer. Um, and if we are going to, if, if it does look like a timeline of <laughs> September or even further before we come up with a you know full policy, which I'm all for, and it sounds like we do need to have a discussion, um, it, not just about rate rates, but also um, you know possibly about which parks make the most sense for which kinds of programming and so forth, and I think we'd all be interested in, in seeing a presentation about that. I mean, is it is it possible, though, in the meantime, to, to in addition to the kind of stopgap um, action of the moratorium, to also throw out a few alternative sites um, and, and make it very clear that it's temporary um, and that we're, we're looking at a broader policy? Chair Connor and Commissioner Laramore Hall, Yes, all of this kind of hit my <clears throat> excuse me my email this morning, right before I went into a day of interviews. So I responded very quickly. Um, but I do agree that um, I don't 
I, I, if we can accommodate people continuing their fitness regime but in a different park, then um, I think that we should try to do that in the short term. And it should be with the understanding that we're going to do short period renewals of park permits because we may be changing how we make decisions on permitting of these kinds of activities. But you're exactly right, and that would be the direction that we will be taking you know, as of tomorrow. Uh, yes. And, and just as a follow-up comment, the one thing that you said that I, I really like also is, is reaching out and trying to develop relationships with some of the vendors or mm -hmm. some of the organizations that are doing this um, to bring them sort of under, under the umbrella of the department. Um, mm -hmm. and in part, I mean, in large part, because then there's the advertising muscle, so to speak, of our of our department to to encourage even more participation, et cetera. And it's not just word of mouth or a group of friends, um, et cetera. So I, I like that, and and it would be great to to bring it in and um, and to be able to talk about affordability and and all of those things. Any other comments? Thank you, Ms. Rapp, for that information. We look forward to seeing it on the agenda. Item number two. Approval of minutes. So move. I need a second. Second. Oops. Um, were you at the meeting? Yeah, wasn't I? I don't think you were. Were you at that last meeting? Uh, you're correct. Okay. Um, Commissioner oh, Garak. Oops. <laughs> Trying to sneak in there on us. I'll second because I was there. <laughs> All those in favor that were there? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Abstention. <laughs> With two abstentions, correct? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, item number three, street tree advisory committee recommendations. Um, item number A, one, 14, oh, I, excuse me, 141 Coronado Circle. Uh, Mr. Downey. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, 141 Coronado Circle, um, at this location, the home is, um, the, the street is a circular street, and the home is at the turn of, of the street, so the parkway is a rather large parkway. Um, this is the only tree in that parkway uh, for this residence, and many of the other local uh, sites do not have trees in this section of the street. Um, the uh, committee reviewed the uh, gutter damage. The, uh, they looked at the tree. The tree is out of balance and would be difficult to rebalance. Um, the tree has lost a, a few limbs in the past, not recently, but uh, in the last few years. Um, the designated species for this street is Eucalyptus citadora. Uh, however, an alternate species is Platinus racemosa, which is California sycamore. Uh, the committee determined that uh, part of the issue is the fact that the parkway undulates, and this tree is at the narrowest portion of that parkway. Um, they determined also that there's plenty of space for two additional trees and felt because of the condition of this tree and the gutter and the repairs that would have to be made, <clears throat> the damage to the tree when repairs were made, um, that they felt the tree uh, should go ahead and be removed on the condition that the property owner allows us to plant two California sycamores in the wider portions of the parkway. Thank you, Mr. Downey. Did everyone get a chance to look at the two letters that um, for item 3A1? Um, yeah. Okay, great. Um, any questions, yeah. Mr. Downey? Comments? I have a question. Yes. This is a PUD development with the Homeowners Association, and um, when you say that the owner is going to allow us to plant two trees in the parkway, we're going to also, I assume, need the approval of the association to do that. The owner doesn't own. I, I doubt if they own the uh, parkway, and even if they do, I, I, I haven't checked into that. Uh, but the uh, the parkway 
the city does have the right to plant in those locations and we definitely will make contact with the owner and make sure that any approvals by the uh, association uh, will occur. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Could I ask for a motion? Oh, sorry. Yes. So a question. So um, it's hard for me to, from the pictures, to see the kind of scale of what we're talking about. Do you, th are, are the new, would the new trees be visible from the, the, by the two residents who wrote in saying that they will miss the missing tree? I'm just saying, is it an actual replacement, or are we talking about it's going to be, you know, a hundred yards away and kind of irrelevant? Uh, Commissioner Connor, uh, Lerma Hall, the uh, the tree, the replacement trees would be approximately 40 feet each side of the existing tree. Okay. Could I have a motion? I move to concur with the uh, staff recommendation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number B, deny the following street tree removal requests. 3705 Pescadero Drive. Mr. Downey. Uh, Chair Connor, Commissioners, the um, tree uh, in question is a rather large red flowering gum eucalyptus. The uh, tree is healthy. Uh, the petitioner uh, referenced some cracks and the safety of the tree, safety and health of the tree. The tree is absolutely healthy. The cracks they mention are growth uh, stretch marks in the bark, if you if you would like to call them that, um, and are not a structural problem for the tree. Um, we have notified the streets division about the hardscape damage, uh, and the items have been placed on their list of repairs. Um, based on those facts, the street advisor committee and staff recommend that you deny the removal at this time. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments of the commission? I could uh, use a motion. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. Item number four, director of golf recruitment process. Ms. Rapp? Well, you thought you'd seen the last of her, but hey, <laughs> hey, hey. In <laughs> um, her last hurrah, uh, I've asked uh, Business Services Manager Nancy Woods to give this report. I don't know if it's the last time I'll be here. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chair Connor and Commissioners. Um, Commissioner Forsell is entirely correct in his report. We're seeing a sea change out at the golf course, I think, in the next year. Um, I actually like change. I think it brings new ideas and you know, different look at the operation. So I'm sure after we complete the process with a new management team out there, things will be just great. But the golf uh, concession has been operated by Richard Chavez for almost 28 years, and he is leaving on December 1st. So back in December of 2007, we did start the process of looking for a replacement for Mr. Chavez by contacting a consultant who is an expert in the business of Southern California golf operations. The department has used this consultant several times in the past for market studies and fee and capital, and actually we did use the same consultant when Mr. Chavez renewed his contract five years ago whereby they went out and looked at Southern California golf concessions for us to ensure that we were still getting the proper terms and conditions out of a contract. <clears throat> so we uh, engaged the consultant in uh, early March and we proceeded to have them look at the area for us to determine um, what we should look for in a new golf concession contract. They gave us a report, and from that report then we prepared a request for proposals through our purchasing division, which listed all the requirements, terms and conditions, and things we were looking for uh, for the next golf professional contract. This RFP was issued on June 20th, and the RFPs are due tomorrow, July 24th. I actually went over to the purchasing department this afternoon. Two have come in already, so I perused them very quickly this afternoon. And I know we will get several more, uh, maybe 
you know, the first time this was done 28 years ago, I guess there were 85 applicants. We don't anticipate that level of response this time. One of the, uh, there were several ways we recruited people to uh, reply to an RFP, and the major way was that the um, Professional Golf Association of um, the United States sent out an email uh, to every PGA member. So um, we sent that out, and that was one of the ways we reached people. Plus, there were our local people who run the pro shop that um, – I'm not close to the phone, so I'm annoyed. <laughs> um, <laughs> my phone never it's rings. Just, it's just very it's weird. Steve. Okay. <sighs> oh, good. Thank you. This is a to the best of us. <laughs> this is a summer meeting. <laughs> anyway, uh, we do have a calendar of events for the request for proposal process. And like I say, it was issued. It's due tomorrow. We have uh, are setting up an interview committee, which will have some uh, professionals from the city. And we also asked the Golf Advisory Committee at their last meeting to propose two members to sit on the Evaluation Committee. So they did that. And we also asked for some alternates in case um, they're not unable to uh, sit on the committee when we have Evaluation Panel when we have that date. Currently, we're intending to interview finalists on August 12th, but that's tentative at the current time. The next part of the process after we re receive the RFPs is that we're going to send the ones who met the minimum qualifications down to the consultant, and they're going to perform an extensive financial analysis of the qualifications. This is a very large business um, for the golf course, and so we want to be able to ensure that the proposer comes in with the proper financial credentials to have financial backing for quite a number of years. And so that's very important to us is to, is to get that analysis from, from the consultant so that will help us with our decision. And then after we pick a finalist, we will negotiate a contract. That contract will go to the city council and hopefully everything will be in place when Mr. Chavez leaves on December 1st and a new operator will take over. That completes my report. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Commissioners, any questions? Only that we're going to miss you. Oh, well, thank you. We're going to hopefully um, still have you there in a case of emergencies or on a part-time basis or an hour or yes, something. Yes, that is when correct. When we get bogged down, you're going to still be run in and uh, rescue us? Yes, I'm planning on retiring here, and okay. I have a home here, so I will be staying and available, um, assist in the training of my success for successor and also see this contract through to completion. So I, presumably we can reach you by cell phone. <laughs> No, that's the city cell phone. Maybe they're going to take it away from me next week. I don't know. No, I'm kind of getting my own personal cell phone. So. Thank you, Ms. Woods. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you, Nancy. Item number five, 2008 Department Annual Awards Program. Uh, Chair Connor and Commission, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know where my courtesy um, hat was, but I would like to suggest that we take item number nine, advisory committee interview and appointments. We do have our applicant here, and although Sorry. I'm sure he has a limited amount of interest in all of our business <laughs> items, I'm not sure that he really needs to stay for the whole meeting. So if uh, the commission is willing uh, to take that item first, I think it would be appreciated by the applicant. Absolutely. Please come forward. Uh, yeah, this, this is your opportunity if you want to stick around. Item number nine. <laughs> is it Mr. Ballas. Ballas? Okay. Advisory committee interview and appointments, item number nine. Chair, Connor, and Commissioners, I'm happy to introduce William Ballas, who has volunteered to uh, come to our advisory committee. He is a member of UCP Work, Inc., out, our Outlook group that the city conducts, and the rehab hospital. Um, he also indicates that he's been a participant in park and recreation programs 
uh, for over 20 years. So a welcome um, addition to our committee if it passes your approval. And I'll pass this over to William so he can answer a few questions for you. Hello, welcome. Um, have you actually sat in on any of the no, advisory committee meetings yet? No, I haven't. Great. Good to know. I'm the liaison, and I'll look forward to seeing you there. Okay. Uh, any other questions of the commission for well, Mr. Bellis? I just Bellis? wonder, um, what would you like to see happening in the community? Are there any great holes that you would like to see filled? Um, in 20 years of participating in sports and doing different things through the city, um, some programs have gone away, some programs have, you know, continued on and stuff, and I'd like to see a little more um, participation through the city and the board and everything, getting more programs back to allow, you know, more people to participate. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Well, in that case, I could use a motion. Move for approval. I need a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Welcome aboard. Thank you. All and right. you can stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> yeah, you're more than welcome. We've <laughs> if you'd like to stay. Thank you. Mr. Ballas, you may find it of interest to stay for the first part of this next item. Okay. Back to item number five, 2008 Department Annual Awards Program. Ms. Rapp. Uh, Chair Connor and Commissioners, first, my apologies. I uh, take full responsibility for the fact that we madly went along planning our annual department awards breakfast, and I realized only the day before that we neglected to send our invitation out to you. So my apologies. Um, and I know that um, Commissioner Longstreet was able to attend at the last minute. I, uh, Carla and I have put as a task on our calendar when we begin to plan this event to send you a save the date <laughs> so that you have that date for the future. I feel much better. I thought you just neglected to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> And that I was getting the notice the day before. No, I, I just, at the very last minute, I'm like, Carla, you got to call him. <laughs> it was totally my fault. I, I really am sorry. And I would say when you get Save the Date, really do say that it's a, it's a wonderful event to get to spend time with all of the staff. It looks and wonderful. eat breakfast and have a nice time. So this was our third annual <coughs> Department Awards Breakfast. It was held on July 10th at the Cabrillo Pavilion. Each year we have, I'm going to talk a little bit. Each year we seem to have a, a bigger attendance by department staff, both permanent and hourly staff. The feeling in the room amongst the staff members continues to grow more um, with more uh, interest and support for the program and it's very rewarding to see that. Um, I started out with recognizing uh, our 12 newest employees that have joined the department over the last year, 12 new permanent employees. And we also recognized Nancy Woods and Scott Jorgensen uh, upon, and, and presented them with a, um, a, a gift in memory so that they'll take something from the department with them. And we recognized the uh, various um, staff that we have that have served the city organization and the department for a number of years. Um, we had several employees that have served at least 10 years, um, including Susan Jang Bardick, Ricardo Venegas, Leslie Lund, Fran McDonald, Enrique Alvarez, Carla McGill, and Brian DiBertoli in Parks. Serving 15 years was Santos Escobar. 20 years, Billy Goodnick, Michael Garcia out at the golf course, Pete Whittington with Parks, and amazingly enough, 30 years, Rick Daniel out at the golf course. So those are really uh, substantial contributions that those employees have made to the department over the years, and we're very pleased 
to uh, recognize them. I am going to go through the different uh, team awards and outstanding service awards. I'm not going to talk in the same level of detail about each of them because some of them you're very familiar with. But some of them I would like to spend a little bit more time and share with you what was um, uh, said at the event uh, to recognize their contributions. So our first team award, Excellence in Teamwork, was for the Inclusion Assessment Team. And you can see the individuals who received the award. As you know, our department has a long history of providing recreation programs for children and adults with various limitations or special needs. In addition to offering programs designed specifically for people with a particular limitation, such as being developmentally disabled, we provide an inclusion program which helps people with special needs participate with everyone else in all of our activities. Over the past years, we've added an improved customer service in the form of an inclusion assessment team. These members review over 10,000 activity registration forms each year to identify participants with special needs. The information, is received, the information received is confidential and considered highly important in consideration of providing excellent customer service and safety for each participant. This team is special due to the complexity of the program and the need for attention to every detail so no one slips through the cracks. The team coordinates numerous phone calls to parents, sends requests for additional information, coordinates the assessment team meetings with families, determines the participant protocol for how they'll participate in the activity, and works closely with our program staff to make sure that the person is able to have a good experience and they participate safely. Staff training, responsiveness to program staff, and solutions to daily challenges are handled professionally and promptly. We were very proud to recognize the work of this team. Um, that included Julie Thomas, Donna Glenn, Debbie Pentland, and Kathy King. Our next award was for the tremendous number of Prop 12 projects, the Prop 12 grant funded projects that were completed this year. Those projects included the Oak Park Bridge replacement, Los Banos Discharge Connection, tennis lighting at Muni and Las Vecitas, the Franceschi Park driveway and parking area improvements, and the Dwight Murphy ball field mow strips and fencing replacements. And you can see all the various members of the team. The picture's kind of small, so you can't see their faces. Um, but we have staff there from our project management team, from the recreation side of the house, and the park side of the house that all worked very, very closely together to make those projects um, reach the completion stage so that we did not turn any money back over to the state from our grants. I think. Out of uh, several hundred thousand, I think we ended up with less than 5,000 on the table because projects came in under budget. Our next award is for the Youth Employment Team. You recently had a presentation on uh, our efforts with the community <laughs> to coordinate youth employment. And also the recognition was for our Youth Apprentice Program both for the program this last year and for growing the program this coming year. And the members of that team include the community services staff, the recreation division staff, and you'll see uh, George Johnson and Amy Burgard with the Creeks program each year. Creeks, uh, for last year and this year, uh, Creeks has had uh, a very active involvement with the Youth Apprentice program. And George Jimenez uh, with Parks, for the same, Parks has had um, youth apprentices working with them. Our next effort was um, Team Curb Appeal. And this was for, if I'm sure you have noticed, and uh, we gave you a presentation on this not too long ago, the, um, the new median, the new look of the sustainable uh, planting new median at Garden and Cabrillo. Uh, so this was, um, 
an effort to uh, make it a more sustainable and improved landscape. This is one of the entryways to the beach area um, and our waterfront for um, our residents and our tourists, and it certainly looks substantially improved. And the after-school sports team, uh, as you have received a, a report on this recently, um, this was this award was given uh, to recognize the tremendous efforts of the sports staff and the after-school staff to promote the expansion of the af uh, participation in the after-school sports leagues that we removed the fees. And we have had such a significant increase in participation, 67% increase over the previous year. And to expand a program that significantly is, in that short of period of time, is due to close teamwork. Um, we maintained the quality of the program. We did good outreach to the schools and the principals and the parents. So it was a tremendous team effort by all. Our next award was the category that we introduced last year. These were awards selected by a staff awards team. They created the awards last year and this year a staff committee that doesn't include any managers. Uh, they meet together. They promote the program to their coworkers. We put boxes. Uh, where they can vote out in each of the different work areas around the city. And our employees are encouraged to um, think of someone that they work with within the department that should be recognized for these efforts. Um, and these are our awardees. Our um, awesome hourly, uh, Jorge Garcia Flores, is a parks employee. He was nominated actually by several of his coworkers. He was noted for being dependable and a reliable employee for over 10 years. He always has a smile on his face and is willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. Someone that is always a pleasure to work with because of his positive attitude. And um, that was really, it, when that award was announced, the room just came alive. Uh, you could really tell that this is an hourly employee who is really appreciated by his co-workers on the Parks Division. The second uh, award, uh, Team Spirit, goes to Cindy Leva. You're, many of you are familiar with Cindy. Cindy works our, our front desk reception. And um, Cindy is always very helpful and positive and never seems to get rattled. Uh, she always has a ready smile. She has a depth of knowledge about the department programs and services and a willingness to help others. Her easygoing personality encourages her fellow workers to come together and work as a team. Not uncommon in situations where you have hourly staff, our front desk staff sometimes seems like a revolving door. It is hard to count all the staff that Cindy has recruited and trained over the years. However, no matter the changes in the faces, the level and quality of customer service remains excellent. And that is really a credit to Cindy's ability, um, her leadership and her ability to train and oversee her staff. Uh, we really appreciate what she brings to the department. The Green Gladiator, to recognize um, our, an employee who uh, routinely encourages green practices and has a strong commitment to sustainability. This award went to George Gonzalez with the golf division. Uh, part of George's job at the golf course is to change the cups at each of the holes. Another duty is to empty all the trash cans on the golf course. George is very dedicated to recycling, and he carefully separates the recyclables from the trash. And I, this was a direct quote from the nomination, although this is a filthy, gross, dirty job <laughs> at times. Um, he does it, and he has a commitment to it. Um, as he changes the cups, George closely monitors the turf for the destructive black turf grass Atanus beetle. When he discovers them, it triggers an application of beneficial non-toxic nematodes. 
the golf course is on a path to becoming an Audubon International Cooperative Sanctuary, as you've heard. George maintains the bird baths and waters the young trees as part of this program. Uh, one morning, George found an injured pigeon on the golf course. The bird could not fly. George took it upon himself to gently pick up the hurt bird and make sure it was well cared for, a true example of sustainability. Our Innovator Award goes to one of our hourly employees working with youth activities. Freddie Sanchez uh, is one of the brightest stars. This was his first year and he stood out from the beginning. He is an employee that always takes the initiative to be helpful wherever and whenever help is needed. He would do anything from cleaning up after meetings, doing office work, or setting aside time to create curriculum for the after school program. We had actually a vacancy in that program and we did not have an AOK -OK program coordinator for a while. And uh, Freddie stepped up to the challenge and pitched in and really helped the staff so that the, that vacancy was not felt at the program level on the five different campuses that the program operated. So we were very appreciative of um, Freddie's work ethic and what he brought to the program. And the high flyer for the person who always goes above and beyond uh, went to George Jimenez with our forestry program. Uh, George consistently looks for opportunities to make improvements to our urban forest without being asked. He's completely self-motivated. He is our young care tree specialist. To improve our urban forest, he creates lists of vacant sites for tree planting and small trees that need to be trained to grow properly. And he regularly acts as a diplomat, mediator, and counselor in his daily activities, whether it's working with Public Works, Santa Barbara Beautiful, the police department, or homeowners. So um, he wears many hats and he truly goes beyond what is described in his job description. So, And the highlight of the event is our Outstanding Service Awards. And this is given to one employee in each division. The 2008 uh, award winner in the Parks Division goes to Artemio Aranda. And this year, Artemio has done an exceptional job while working on the Parks Green Team, especially as Parks has continued to reduce their pesticide use. Problems with squirrels and gophers create public safety issues, and Artemio has perfected the soft touch to eradicate these varmints. On a daily basis, Artemio demonstrates a positive attitude that is contagious, and he always goes the extra mile to help his coworkers. All of the park staff thoroughly enjoy working side by side with him. <laughs> In the golf division, the award went to Marcos Mendoza, and um, Marcos is one of those rare ones who understands what a great work ethic means. He commutes from Oxnard to work at the Santa Barbara Golf Club Wednesday through Sunday, and on his days off, he works at Burnham Wood Country Club. So he is someone who is working seven days a week, yet he is always ready with a smile and always with a can-do attitude. Uh, Marcos is known as the weekend warrior. Um, he is sometimes the lone parks employee, maintenance employee, golf maintenance employee that is working on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, he begins his day at 1 a.m. Uh, and uh, will work with his longtime co-worker Floyd Haig, you know, he's recently retired after 50 years of service. And they will basically do everything to prepare the golf course for the golfers so that when the golfers arrive early in the morning, it's ready to go. Our Creeks Division Outstanding Service went to Autumn Malanka. Autumn is the Water Resources Specialist for the Creeks Division, and Autumn was recognized for the tremendous work that she has done in coordinating the interdepartmental effort to complete the city's stormwater management plan, and, and recently the technical guidance to support that effort, which is directed for 
um, people in the community that will also need to comply with the new stormwater uh, um, requirements. Um, and Autumn has done a fabulous job with that and recognized um, by other departments um, for her efforts in that. And in the Recreation Division, Kathy Carpenter, uh, who is our Tennis Services Coordinator, and uh, Kathy has really continued to provide exemplary service to the department since the year 2000. Uh, her work is always high quality. She takes great pride in her work, and it shows in the finished product. Uh, she's positive, dedicated team player, always eager to help whenever and wherever needed. Um, and we're also very proud of the work that she did to complete the tennis lighting project, which was something that started as an idea from her and pushed through all the bureaucratic morass over the years to finally and went out and got the grant so that the work could be done. And so today we have energy saving uh, light fixtures at our um, tennis courts. And I would close with um, noting that the 2008 Outstanding Service Award winner for administration went to our one and only Carla McGill. And I don't have to tell you all the reasons because you know how <laughs> exemplary this young woman is with her service to the department and to the community. Um, she has the, I know, you look at her blush. Okay. <laughs> She, she's a hard worker, she's dedicated, she's loyal. People go to her for the answers because she's got them. If she doesn't know, she'll go find them. If she's having a bad day, this is very occasional. If she is having a bad day, which we're all entitled to, I had mine yesterday. Um, <laughs> I leaned on her. <laughs> then, you know, occasionally, if Carla wants to whine, she always apologizes first. I mean, I, I love that about her. But truly, um, Carla was recognized by her coworkers and selected for all of her contributions to the department. It was a very special day, um, and we um, will continue to do this event. It really was a wonderful expression of all of the accomplishments that we uh, were able to achieve over the year and then recognition of all the special people that um, help make that happen, so. Wow, um, I think commissioners, we owe staff and all the people that were honored a round of applause. <laughs> Incredible, <laughs> wonderful. Ah, any commissioner comments? I, I just say it's really nice to be in the room and see both the, everyone together. It, very seldom do we ever see that, and um, just to be able to sit down and eat and relax and talk to people and have a good, get to know the staff, which I think a lot of times we don't have a chance to do, and, you know, we hear about all their hard work, and, you know, we see the results of those works out in the field, but um, it's nice to put a face with the name. So um, thank you, and Carla, your award was well-deserved. That's great. Thank Commissioner you. Forsell. Um, over the years, I've worked with a lot of different groups, from school boards to business community, nonprofits, and I would say that the um, Parks and Recreation Department is probably as professional and responsive a group as I've ever worked with. And I think this is probably the opportune time to say this when I really only have a few more meetings left to be around, and that if it wasn't for the quality of the staff, I don't think I would have stayed six or seven years in the Park and Recreation Commission. So. Um, it just is really a, an excellent staff. Um, when somebody leaves, somebody else fills that position more than adequately. And uh, they've always been very responsive to anything that I've asked over the years. Um, and I don't want to single anybody out, but I will. Um, without Carl, I think I would have been in the initial years kind of lost. And uh, when you say this person is the glue that holds the administration division together, you know, her contribution can't be overstated. Uh, she really does have the answers to everything. If she doesn't, she gets it. Um, and don't forget to put this into the minutes. Don't delete this out. <laughs> so yes, it's uh, I've had a, it's been a pleasure the last six or seven years working with this um, staff. And um, sometimes people think that giving out awards within a group is you know 
uh, there's always some criticism like the Academy Awards and then you're giving out awards and then it's kind of self-serving, but it really isn't in this case. It really is a, uh, a good thing to do to, re to recognize people that work hard all year and um, they deserve it. So I thank you for uh, the six or seven years that I've had to work with the staff. I'd also like to say ditto, 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 and also it's a testament to the management of Parks and Recreation as well. Um, I think that the camaraderie mm -hmm. and the can-do attitude is a very positive reflection of management, and I, I appreciate that as well. <sighs> Anyone else? Very good job. <laughs> Wonderful. Item number six, Plan Santa Barbara. Ms. Rapp. I think if that's the only one you can exit out of it. Um, commissioners, I sent you an email um, at the end of last week just kind of giving you an update. I plan just to kind of overview that um, today. Um, each of you should have received your copy of the proposed policy options for the general plan update. Document looks like this. It can also be downloaded from the internet from the Plan Santa Barbara page of the city's website. Um, it is time now for the commission to review some of these draft recommendations. Uh, the draft policy summarizes input from the community, which was gathered through a number of public meetings. I attended some. I know many of you attended some. And this draft now is being reviewed again. They've had a couple of public meetings. The last one is tonight, starting at 6 o'clock at the, um, or was it earlier, um, at the library. And um, once this document is uh, complete, then it will go to the Planning Commission and then to City Council and it will form the basis of the scope of the EIR, which is the next stage in the city's update to the general plan. That EIR process will take about eight months, and we will have the opportunity for input to that as well. So this is just another one of the stages for input. But it is important that we review the policy options. There are many things in here that relate to parks, beaches, open space, uh, park and recreation opportunities, and dense neighborhoods, and all of those issues. Uh, in having a discussion with um, community development about how best to incorporate input from the Creeks Advisory Committee and the Park and Recreation Commission, uh, we came up with this proposal to you. Um, the Creeks Advisory Committee is uh, going to have a presentation from the Plan Santa Barbara uh, staff, and they will develop their specific recommendations on Wednesday, August 13th. And then on Wednesday, August 20th, then the Commission will have a special meeting. Uh, this will be a special meeting. We'll do it in our conference room, and it will be at least <coughs> three hours. Uh, the first part of the meeting, we actually will deal with some tree items because your August meeting is canceled. We'll do just some tree items that are timely and need to be addressed. And then uh, the bulk of the meeting will be more in a work session format uh, with a guided discussion, with that discussion guided by both uh, staff from community development and parks and recreation to help facilitate your input. Uh, to the document. Following that meeting, um, we staff will take your comments and incorporate it into the draft document and forward those comments on to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission is having two full day work sessions on September 10th and 11th, and uh, they will be developing their recommendations to go to City Council. So your comments will go to the Planning Commission um, for their discussion. And that was the reason why we were pushing so hard to get the special meeting 
was because we wanted to make sure that your comments could get to the Planning Commission. And then the comment, the document will go to City Council. The tentative date right now is October 8th. So that is the plan. Um, staff will be meeting shortly with community development to kind of come up with uh, how to formulate uh, your discussion on the 20th. But I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for, from the commission? Okay, great. Thank you. Item number seven, annual advisory committee reports. Ms. Rath. Commission members, as you know, each year your advisory committees um, give you a report that is kind of an overview of who's on their committee, what they worked on for the year, and any comments that they have uh, to make to you. Um, so I have no specific uh, comments to add to this, except as you have questions, staff would be happy to answer. Any questions from the commission on the advisory reports? Any comments? Thank you for that. It's always nice to have these reports. We really appreciate it. Okay. Item number eight, election of chair and vice chair. Um, at this time of, of year, we always uh, elected a chair and vice chair. And since I've been speaking um, to um, Ms. Rapp on, about the fact that I wouldn't be continuing as chair, we need a new chair and we'll also need a vice chair. So at this time, if, it was, if it's okay, I would like to suggest B.B. Longstreet as chair, if she's willing, and perhaps Doraka Larimer Hall as vice chair. Any um, comments or Anything you'd like to say about that? Let's, uh, I'll make the motion before they say anything. Yeah, okay, great. Thank um, you. I, move, I was hoping someone would. <laughs> I, I move that uh, we nominate BB to be chair for the next year and Duraka to be vice chair. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Passes unanimously. Thank you. I want to get one last one. <laughs> you had to do it one more time. One last one. Okay, very good. Well, I'd like to say I've really enjoyed this, and it's going to be very odd not ha sitting between these two. Odd. <laughs> uh, is that the adjective you wanted to use? Is that even an adjective? It changed my life, but I, I really enjoyed it, and I'm it's sure. Not in a good way. And I know this is my last year, Steve's last year. Oh, I'm, I have one more year, and then Bibi has one more year after that. So Duraka, and Nolo leaves this year. So Duraka. But everybody's reing up, so I don't know what you guys are I talking don't about. Think everybody's so. reing up. We've got a, there's a stop loss program that's been <laughs> instituted. But, but I feel that the commission's going to be in great hands. So um, it's great to have everyone aboard. And so with that. Next, next month, you're up. Okay, and moving to our next item, item number 10, which is cancellation of the August 27th meeting, which is my birthday, and I'm very glad mm -hmm. <laughs> that I oh, get to go out to dinner. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, do we need a motion for that? Yes. I move we cancel the um, August 27th meeting. And I need a second. And wait, wait, wait. The whole motion is also oh, yeah, if you do the whole scheduled the 20th yeah. special. And hold this special meeting about on that, that 20th. Yeah. Second. And second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. And, and Madam Chair, yes. before you um, call for adjournment, it just seems appropriate since um, the commission was just talking about that there will be some vacancies on the commission um, that that recruitment for new commissioners will take place in the fall and the um, positions will begin in January. And I want to encourage anyone in the community who is interested in learning more about how they <coughs> learn more about what a commissioner does, what their interest is, to contact me um, or any of the commissioners. Uh, to inquire about that. We are always looking for people who are sincerely interested in the public good 
in the services that Parks and Recreation and the Creek Restoration Clean Water Management Program um, bring all of the contributions that we bring to the community. Uh, so any people who are interested, we encourage them to contact me, follow up with the commissioner, and then uh, we'll keep them apprised of the recruitment process as we go forward. Uh, Commissioner Larimer Hall? Is there a, um, like a special you know, message or that goes to the advisory committees to make sure that those members like, definitely know about the openings? Because that obviously that's a natural pool to be recruiting mm -hmm. from. Um, the email, I think it just goes to the departments and the departments forward the information to the advisory committees for renewal. Are you asking specifically about sending something to our many advisory committees within our department? That's a very good idea and we should do that. And we can. Cool. Yes. And then lastly, I, I just want to back up what, what yeah. Ms. Rapp just said to anyone who's watching at home tonight. It, it, you know, it may seem like the last thing in the world that you know, people that that you might think of yourself doing as engaging in city politics on this level. But I have to say, personally, it's been very rewarding, really interesting, um, and um, the the staff is really excellent and very very good at getting someone from zero to. I won't say that I'm going 60 miles an hour, but <laughs> zero to at least 35, at least you know, sort of a downtown speed, uh, safe speed, um, very quickly. Um, it's a great community of people to work in and. And so even if you've sort of never thought of yourself as someone who's engaged in government or uh, politically minded or whatever, I just strongly urge people that are watching at home that if you care about parks, if you think that there should be um, exciting and, and, and equitable and, and accessible programs um, uh, provided by the city uh, to really think about it. And I had one more comment. Um, I just realized, as uh, Ada said that, that um, BB will be taking over at the next meeting. Um, and so I wanted to um, thank Ada for a year and a half of doing this. Tell her what a thank good you. job she did. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. And, <laughs> you know, when, when uh, it was first broached the subject, whether she was really apprehensive about it, um, doing it. And uh, <clears throat> once she learned to turn her cell phone off, she did an excellent <laughs> job. I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by a lot of people. That so thank you very much for serving the last year. Well, thank you. I think we yes, have thank a you. golden cell phone award or something. <laughs> I think Nancy Woods got it today. <laughs> okay. So with next all month that, the, the reign of terror begins. Yes. <laughs> and uh, with, uh, with all that said, I would like to adjourn the meeting and thank you.